Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. Did you know I really like OS command injections? It may seem simple at first, but if you really drill down to the core, it's not as simple as it first seems. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Now, command injections, they happen when we can control parameters that get passed into a shell command. So say, for example, if there's an input that's not being handled safely and not being sanitized properly, we can insert our own OS command into the input and have them executed by the shell. Now, depending on the capabilities and privileges of that shell, we can execute various commands. We can do stuff like who am I? We can do stuff like ls, but we can also do stuff like netcat maybe to make a reverse shell connection. The theory sounds very simple, but it is not simple at all to find these types of vulnerabilities. How to test for them is a whole different matter in and of itself. The reason is that command injection is really hard to find because you'll never know which parameters actually contain your command injections. This means that you'll have to fuss every single parameter that you find. And you might be wondering, okay, so what list do I use? What, what characters do I use to to fuss with and to determine that we first need to talk about which command separators can possibly be used and also which commands. So in Linux, in Windows, in every single operating system you can chain commands together. By the following command separators will work on Windows and Unix systems. You'll have a single and a double ampersand and a single and a double pipe character and this basically means that you can uh, chain two commands together like uh, you'll first do an ls and then you'll uh, do two ampersand characters and you'll do an who am i so that's basically used to separate those two commands and it can be used in our advantage because we can use them to make our fuzzing lists and we also have the following command which works for unix based systems which would be a point comma, a semicolon, I mean, of course, and a new line character, which would be backslash new line or 0x0a. Now, on Unix-based systems, we can also use backticks or dollar characters to perform inline execution of an injected command within the original command. So we'll have a single backtick injected command and another backtick, or we'll have a dollar sign and a parentheses injected command and a closing parentheses. Now, this matters quite a lot because we'll need these characters later on to get through some blacklist filters that might possibly be in place. Um, a lot of developers will try to shield their shell commands. So if you have an input that's being fed into a shell, a lot of developers will try to shield that shell command by implementing a blacklist and they'll try to uh, implement the blacklist in a way which will filter out any command separators and possibly any commands as well but commands might be difficult because some texts might contain similar things to commands and they might be filtered uh, while it's not the intention so some developers they assume that if you filter the command separators that is going to be enough Others, they also filter commands out, but blacklists always work on the principle that if you forget one of the command separators or one of the commands, that you still have OS command execution possible. So you can do one of the commands that's on screen right now. You can combine them with one of the command separators that's on screen, but make sure that you combine every single command with every single command separator, create your fuzzing list that way and fuzz every single parameter that you can find. So that's basically how I would check for any command execution. I would go through my application, make sure that I have my burp on in the background or any other man in the middle proxy, but I'm talking mostly about burp because I know that application well. Then I would filter out my parameterized requests and I would replace every single parameter. I would send it to the intruder. I would replace my parameters with my list that I just created. And that's how I can test for command injection. Now, of course, we can also do blind command injection. We can launch pretty much the same request, but we can, for example, launch a ping on the loopback address that will uh, execute for a, a given amount of seconds. 
say for example ping dash c10 and then the loopback address and an ampersand sign that's our command separator in this case this will cause some lag when we send the command and when we receive some lag consistently that will tell us that we might have some command execution as well now i say consistently that matters quite a lot because it can happen that the server does lag out and you might get some lag on one request but the following requests might not give that lag then it's pretty sure that it was just some server-sided lag that was causing the issue and not an actual command injection so i hope you enjoyed this video it was pretty short but command injection in and of itself is not hard to test for what makes it hard to test for is that you have to fuzz every single parameter and you have to fuzz it with every single command and every single command separator so that takes quite a while after a while you'll develop a nose for which parameters are vulnerable to os command injection but i would highly advise you to just fuzz everything thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did i would really appreciate a like and i'll see you in the next one Bye-bye, amazing hackers.